Super Mario, what a man. Since his first appearance in 1981's Donkey Kong, he has done it all. Soccer, golf, plumbing, racing, and believe it or not, even jumping. In 96, our boy Mario thought it was time to take a break from his usual pursuits, and with the help of the legendary RPG juggernaut Squaresoft, he decided to save the world RPG style in Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. A Nintendo and Square mashup? That has gotta be good, right? The original Super Mario RPG managed to combine everything we loved about both Mario and JRPGs into one very solid experience that is regarded by many as one of the greatest RPGs of the era. This recent remake takes things a step further by taking the original game, making it look a sound better than ever before, and adding a load of quality of life improvements. I had a blast playing this game all those years ago and just as much fun playing it this time around with the remake. If you missed out on this original classic JRPG, then Super Mario RPG Remake is the perfect opportunity to see what all the fuss is about. What is your experience with this game? Did you play it on the Super Nintendo? Was this remake your first time playing it? Or haven't you had a chance to play it yet? Let me know in the comments below. Before we get into the review, if you liked this video, it would help me out a lot if you hit that like button and sub for more RPG content coming soon. You can also hit that super thanks if you'd like to support the channel. Alright, let's get into it. The first thing you'll notice with the remake is that the visuals have had a complete overhaul. This style was a great choice as it retains all the charm that was present back in the 90s. But as charming as it may be, it does suffer from a bit of Switch syndrome. That being the inability to run at a steady frame rate. It isn't that bad though. As an added bonus, we also get several pre-rendered cutscenes that are mainly shown to introduce the characters and some of the major bosses. Combat aside, which I'll talk about later, the only significant additions that we get in the remake are quality of life additions, and this includes things like fast travel and autosave. There's also some post-game content. This provides some extra challenges to the gameplay, but it was nothing that I was interested in completing. Then we have the new breezy difficulty mode. This was a very strange choice since the normal game is mindlessly easy as it is. But yeah, sure, some of the game's audience will be little kids, but let's be real, the majority will be middle-aged adults who grew up with Super Mario RPG all those years ago. I spent the entire game wondering why there wasn't a harder mode for all of the longtime fans. And that's about it in terms of additions. There's no new story, no new characters, no new moves. It is, for the most part, the same Super Mario RPG that we love, just prettier, and that's fine. Something that I would have loved, however, is the addition of voice acting. There are so many quirky characters and some quality expressive voice acting would have helped really bring them to life and taken this game to the next level. And while there may be no voice acting, at least there is a re-recorded soundtrack by original composer Yoko Shimomura. And I'll tell you what, this soundtrack has some absolute bangers and hearing these new arrangements was a treat. You can also switch between both the original and the new soundtracks from the menu which is great if you want to keep things old school. So what is this game all about? I'll give you one guess. Big Bad Busted Up Bully Bowser kidnaps Princess Toadstool and a heroic plumber risks his life to save her. Well, at least that's what happens at the start. It soon becomes apparent that there's an even bigger threat to the world, the Smithy Gang, who are dead set on world domination. It is up to Mario to collect the seven stars and save the world once again. Being a turn-based RPG, you would expect that our favourite plumber slash professional high jumper isn't going at it alone. He is joined by Mello, who is part cloud, part marshmallow, Peach or Toadstool, who is a princess extraordinaire, Gino, who is Pinocchio's little brother, and Bowser, who is a team's gynecologist. These characters all have their quirks and reasons for tagging along. Mario, on the other hand, is a silent protagonist, which I always felt was quite odd. But what he lacks in vocabulary, he makes up for in his unmatched charade skills. To put it simply, the 
story is simple and pretty much what you would expect from a Mario game. Fun, fun, lighthearted and fun all the way through. It is short and it is sweet with a full playthrough only taking me just over 10 hours. This is a little less than the original thanks to the quality of life improvements such as fast travel. Exploring the colourful world of Super Mario RPG was one of the most enjoyable parts of the game. I thought it was really cool how the map replicates the Super Mario World style map with each town or dungeon being accessible from there. Exploring each area contains a mix of both platforming and typical RPG elements. There are plenty of towns with shops, inns and loads of NPCs to interact with. And as you would expect, Mario can jump around at all times which is a requirement requirement to access many areas and solve some of the puzzles. It really pays off to talk to everybody and explore everywhere too. There are a bunch of side quests to unlock and secrets to uncover, not to mention the loads of invisible boxes that you can find by mindlessly jumping around. Then there's the mini games. Super Mario RPG features many simple yet fun mini games ranging from Yoshi's Racing to falling down a waterfall. Most of these are initially part of the story, but going back to beat your best score and trying to get all of the rewards for them was a lot of fun. They just don't make them like they used to. Unless this is the Yakuza game. When Mario runs into an enemy, the battle will begin. Here we have a very simple turn-based battle system. Your characters can attack, use a special ability which costs flower points, defend or use an item. But what Mario RPG does differently is the addition of interactivity during attack and defense animations. If you time your button press correctly, you will dish out more damage. The timing for this critical attack depends on your current weapon, meaning that these timings will constantly be changing as new weapons are found. Damage can also be reduced by timing a button press as an attack hits the character. This is a constant challenge due to most enemy attacks being different, so naturally learning the enemy's attack animations makes it much easier to defend. I really enjoy this interactive inclusion and honestly it is the battle system's saving grace as everything else is very simple. This remake does however add a few new additions and options in combat. First, we have the Tri Combo attack that can be unleashed when the gauge fills. There's also a chain that builds up when you string together correctly timed attacks. This increases your stats and it always gave that extra incentive to see how high you can get it. Finally, and most significantly, is the ability to switch characters during battle. No longer do you need to pick your party and stick with them for the whole fight. Now they can jump in and out, making every character useful. Unfortunately, Mario is apparently far too important to be switched out, which was a poor design choice in my opinion. Now, while these new additions all do improve the combat, they also make the game way easier than it was in the past. I absolutely steamrolled through every single enemy and boss without ever going out of my way to grind. This lack of challenge was one of my biggest issues with the game and like I mentioned before, it was particularly annoying that the developers went out of their way to add a breezy mode and not a hard mode. But at least there is a challenging super boss and some post game challenges if you're into that. Super Mario RPG is very simple in terms of its RPG mechanics and I've always wanted a bit more in this area. There really isn't much you can do when it comes to customizing your characters. All skills are learnt upon leveling up and you'll have every skill by the end of the game. When you level up, you can choose to increase one of three main stat areas. These are attack and defense, magic and magic defense and HP. The problem here is that one of the three choices usually offers a lot more than the other two which makes it an easy choice. The only other customization option is equipment. The weapons and armor are almost always a case of equip the one with the highest stat increase and the single accessory slot doesn't leave much to the imagination. And while these overly simple RPG mechanics do leave a lot to be desired, I also feel that this game would be the perfect introduction to the RPG genre which to be honest was probably one of the goals back in the 90s. Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars has always been one of the best RPGs on the Super Nintendo and is a game that still holds up today. This recent remake features the same great Mario RPG experience that fans have been enjoying for decades. 
The way that it blends traditional Mario elements with JRPG mechanics makes this a joy to play from start to finish. However, this time it looks and sounds better than it ever has with several new features that make it my favourite version of the game. It's just a shame that these new features all contribute in making a relatively easy game even easier. And the fact that they went out of their way to make a breezy mode but not a hard mode was a crying shame. Now, something that I've always been a massive fan of is the attack and defense timing systems. This brings a great level of interactivity into the basic turn-based combat system. The word basic is something that rings true in just about every area of the game. If you're after a more complex RPG system, then you may be a little disappointed here. Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars was, and still is, a lot of fun. If you're into those classic JRPGs of the 90s and haven't had a chance to play the game yet, this is your chance as the remake is arguably the best way to experience Mario's first RPG outing. I would love to know your experience with this game. Did you play it in the 90s? Was this remake your first go at the game? Let me know in the comments below. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure you hit that like button and sub for more RPG content coming soon. Also, you can hit that super thanks to support the channel. See you next time.